السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس دس از ڈاکٹر محمد شفیق لیکچر آف فلاسفی ایٹ ڈپارٹمنٹ آف اسلامک اینڈ پاکستان اسٹڈیز ٹرسٹ دا کورس آئی ایم ٹیچنگ از فار انٹروڈکشن ٹو لاجک کورس کوڈ از پی ایچ آئی ون زیرو ون دس از لیکچر نمبر ٹوینٹی ٹو اینڈ ٹاپک ٹوڈے از سمبولک لاجک The outline of today's lecture consists of two parts. Uh, the first one is the definition uh, about the symbolic logic and what is it all about. And the second part of this lecture consists of propositions and symbols or what are the symbols, what are the different symbols be used for different propositions. So let us start. Symbolic logic uh, is also called modern logic. And this symbolic logic is the uh, recent development of 20th century. Uh, there are different logicians have been working upon a different kind of Uh, improvements and developments in, in uh, formal and informal logic and the result is they have come up with some symbolic logic and the founder of this logic is a uh, very popular famous uh, philosopher of 20th century uh, Burton Russell. Burton Russell is uh, Burton Russell is a very popular personality of 20th century. He was not only a philosopher, but also a social activist, uh, a teacher, uh, and a very uh, famous and active intellectual of 20th century who took part in different kind of activities and uh, worked immensely upon uh, social activism as well as philosophical concepts. And uh, symbolic logic is also uh, called mathematical logic and uh, a product of uh, immense research work and efforts of Burton Russell, uh, Ludwig Wittgenstein and all other popular philosophers of 20th century. Although traditional categorical logic can be used to present and assess many of our common patterns of reasoning, uh, modern logicians have developed much more comprehensive and powerful systems of expressing rational thought. These newer logic language, logical languages are often called symbolic logic since they employ special symbols to represent clearly even highly complex and logical relationships. If you remember and if you go back uh, to our lecture about language and complexities of language uh, in the beginning lectures of, of, of the production logic, uh, you would recall that uh, language has got so many problems and most of the time the confusion and the problems are the result of, of a ambiguous language and that is why uh, some logicians and philosophers came to the conclusion that if we can develop some kind of symbolic logic or mathematical logic, uh, we would easily uh, get rid of those problems and confusions which are the product of language. Hence, uh, this symbolic or mathematical logic was developed in order to uh, get rid of complex uh, complexities produced by different uh, languages. Now, what is propositions and symbols? Uh, Symbolic logic 
uses only declarative statements or propositions because any other types of propositions are not truth functional that is to say they cannot be declared either true or false i'll uh, again i'll try to take you back to our initial uh, lectures in introduction to logic if you remember when we were uh, discussing propositions uh, the kind of propositions we have discussed that uh, there are so many statements in, in in every each and every language but all those statements cannot be considered as proposition why because the only sentence or the only statement which is called proposition is the statement which asserts or denies something and a logical argument can only be composed of such statements which are called proposition all propositions are sentences but all sentences are not propositions because there are certain sentences which do not assert or deny something so we cannot consider them as proposition and we cannot use them while composing an argument so uh, the problem here uh, uh, the issue here is that we basically want to develop a symbolic logic or mathematical logic which can provide us uh, some sort of platform Uh, free of complexities of language and obviously because this is a uh, symbolic logic and it is concerned with the arguments and arguments are composed of propositions so symbolic logic uses only declarative statements or proposition because those are the statements which can which are which assert or deny something hence we can declare them to be either true or false for example the interrogative proposition like if i ask you what is your name now this proposition or this sorry this statement or this sentence cannot be called a proposition why because it is it's not truth functional because we cannot assign any truth value to it that is it like this statement or sentence quote what is your name unquote this statement can neither be true nor be false because this is simply a question so this is not a proposition if it is not a proposition we cannot use symbolic logic for it because it does not have any truth value now in similar manner there are certain other other sentences uh, which basically exclaim uh, someone's emotion or passion for example when we say what an exciting journey now although it's not a question it's just kind of expression but again it's not declarative statement or it's, it's, it does not assert or deny something we cannot use it in symbolic logic because it does not have any truth value we, we can't assign any statement anything saying that uh, it is either true or false hence again we can only imply declarative propositions in symbolic logic for example uh, the declarative sentence or a proposition which asserts or denies and the example could be that of donald trump is a racist president now depending on the context we may say yes it is true that donald trump is a racist president or we may say it is false 
that Donald Trump is a racist president. In any case, this statement is a declarative statement. It's a proposition. So this can be employed in our symbolic logic. Uh, now, again, I would uh, request you to just go back in your memory and uh, try to figure out uh, different kinds of propositions. So mainly there are two major kind of declarative propositions uh, which are used in symbolic logic, a simple proposition and a compound proposition. Now, if you remember, we discussed it in detail in our uh, lecture on propositions and definition of propositions that a simple and or single proposition is the proposition or is the statement or it's a declarative statement that is composed of only one proposition. For example, if I say this room is big or if I say he is not tall. Similarly, on the other hand, there's another kind of proposition or declarative statement which are called compound propositions. And these compound propositions or these declarative statements are those kind of statements which are composed of two or more than two propositions. For example, if I say Jack is singing while Jill is dancing, or if I say this room is big and it is full of students. So when we join more than two single propositions, that is called compound proposition. And in symbolic logic, we use these declarative statements or propositions. So we use symbols for these. Another example could be Donald Trump of, of a single or simple proposition would be Donald Trump is the President of the United States. As we can see this proposition, so only one component. Another example of compound proposition could be if the road is wet, then either it rains today or the fire trucks fill on the road. So this we can see is a proposition which has more than one statement, more than one declarative statement. So hence it is called compound proposition. Now let's move to the symbols. What are the symbols? In symbolic logic, the logicians or the moral logicians or mathematical logicians use the lower case of English alphabet P through Z to symbolize propositions they are called variables. So for different statements in symbolic logic we normally use the lower case of English alphabets starting from P through Z and we can use these symbols for different kind of propositions and these symbols are called variables. Now the uppercase A through Z are called constants. For example, if we let P stand for the proposition Jack is singing, Jack is singing is symbolized as P. One of the symbols used in symbolic logic is dot. Now, for propositions, we use symbols or lowercase letters of English language uh, starting from P through Z, while on the, sorry, while for the relationship between 
more than one proposition. We, 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 we use different symbols. And the first symbol or the first relationship we are going to discuss here between the more, or more than one proposition, that would be conjunction, that would be and. For example, if I say he is tall and intelligent. Now, these are the two propositions which are combined, which are joined by the conjunction term and. And in symbolic logic, we normally use dot for this expression as a symbol. Conjunctive proposition connected by word and and the symbol we use is dot. Let's take, for example, the proposition Jack is singing and Jill is dancing. So if we use P for Jack is singing and the letter Q for Jill is dancing, this expression symbolically can be presented as P dot Q. P stands for Jack is singing while Q stands for Jill is dancing and dot basically expresses the conjunctive relationship between the two propositions. Similarly, another symbol which is called wedge, that is that sign or that symbol is used for disjunctive relationship between the propositions. For example, if I say either he is intelligent or she is brave. Now, there are two propositions uh, and they are related to each other with this junction. We have symbol of wedge which is read as either or just uh, this is used to symbol, symbolize the connect, connection of disjunctive proposition. So if we let P stand for Jack is singing again, and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition either Jack is singing or Jill is dancing could be expressed or symbolized as P wedge Q. So that is the second symbol of, of symbolic logic. Uh, another symbol which is called horseshoe, that is the expression or that is the symbol which we use for the relationship between the two propositions which is conditional in nature. In conditional statements, if you, if you remember, in conditional propositions, I have already discussed in our lecture uh, in uh, defining propositions, that those propositions which contain the phrase, if, then, they are called conditional or hypothetical propositions because there is a condition involved in it. Now, the symbol for such phrases, if, then, in symbolic logic, we use is the horseshoe. Conditional propositions are connected by the word if, if and then, or just then. Now, if we let P stand for Jack singing, and Q stand for Jill is dancing, then the proposition, if Jack is singing, then Jill is dancing can be expressed symbolically as if P then Q or P horseshoe Q. The fourth symbol or another symbol is the triple bar which is used for the biconditional proposition. The biconditional propositions are those propositions which is read as if and only if 
it is used to symbolize the connection of, of between biconditional propositions. Conditional propositions are connected by the word if and only if. And if we let P stand for Jack, it's singing, and Q for Jill is dancing, then the proposition Jack is singing if and only if Jill is dancing can be expressed symbolically as P triple bar Q. Now we are going to look in the separate premise and the conclusion. The symbol we normally use for conclusion or the terms we use for the conclusion are therefore, hence, consequently, so. Generally, taking this term therefore as the sign of the conclusion and the symbol we use for this is forward slash and triple dots and we separate the premise from the conclusion. For example, if we say if P then Q, P and conclusion is Q, so then we can express it as P forward slash and triple dot Q. <clears throat> The sixth symbol we used in symbolic logic is the tilde, and this is used for negation of proposition. This is used for not. So symbol tilde, which, which is read as not, is used to negate proposition. For example, Jack, Jack is not singing. So we use tilde and P. If we take P as Jack is singing, and we want to express the proposition, Jack is not singing, then symbolically we can express it in, in, in two symbols, tilt and P. So this is the summary of basic symbols. P to Z variables, A to Z constant, dot is used for conjunction and wedge is used for disjunction either r horseshoe is used for conditional or hypothetical proposition if then and triple bar is used for biconditional proposition if and only if while the sign for the conclusion is forward slash and three dots and the sign for negation used in symbolic logic is tilt or curve. So these are basically the symbolic uh, positions or, or express expression of uh, propositions into symbols. And I hope you understood it. Uh, if you have any questions or queries or comments, please do let us know. And We'll discuss it before starting our next lecture. Till then, thank you very much and take care. Allah Hafiz.